Hello everyone, this is our group comparative strategy video presentation for Burberry and Prada. My name is Mohammed, and in our group we have Suman, Nicole, Paula, Patricia and Tola. Prada was founded by Mario Prada, who in 1913 in Milan opened an exclusive shop of leather goods. About 40 years later, his daughter Luisa is taking over the business. In 1927, Mucha Prada starts her partnership with Patricio Bartelli and became a head of the brand. Between 1983 and 1986, they are opening shops in big fashion cities like New York or Paris. In 1988, Prada is launching its first woman ready to wear collection. Five years later, Mucha creates a new brand, Miu Miu, and in the same year, the brand is launching the first man ready to wear collection. In 1995, Prada won another award award from CFSA as a designer of the year and four years later the company is buying shoe brand church as well as Jill Sander and 51% of Helmut Land. In 2007 Prada is collaborating with LG to launch their phone which is the first one with entirely touch screen. By 2015 Prada has about 386 stores worldwide and 3.42 million pound turnover. Burberry was founded by Thomas Burberry in 1856. In 1879 he invented Gabardine in, and in 1891 Burberry opened its first shop in London. During the First World War Burberry adapted the trench coat to meet the needs of the officers on the front. As well during the Second World War Burberry was supplying the British Army. In 1998 Burberry had their first campaign with Kate Moss photographed by Mario Testino and three years later Christopher Bailey became design director. Between 2001 and 2005, the brand was being associated with the football hooligans and cheap fakes, which results in change of the brand's reputation. Burberry became the first luxury brand to join ethical trading initiative in 2010. By 2015, Burberry has over 498 stores all around the world, 2.523 million pounds turnover, and is by, run by Christopher Bailey, who in May 2014 became the CEO of the brand. Using the PESTOL framework, categorising environmental factors into the key types, focusing on the six environmental factors, particularly political, environmental, social, technological, economic and legal, Johnson et al. So both the companies had to look at the political, the trade regulations and taxation policies. Uh, for the economy, it's different as a British brand Burberry um, actually excelled after Brexit because the pound became weaker, so the Asian market were buying more, whereas for Prada, who were trying to go into the Asian market, the Japanese economic downfall had a negative effect on this move. Uh, for the social corporate responsibilities, both publish and transparency, uh, technological, they both used in the digital marketing to excel themselves forward and be innovative, especially Burberry taking advantage of that by streaming all of their sh shows live on Snapchat. Legal, they both have to um, abide by ethical trading, data protection for all, on all online customers and the environmental and trading laws. And then back to the environmental um, factors, they have published their trans their corporate responsibility looking at their use of raw materials, waste management and transport emissions. Forces by forces is the attractiveness of business market. This module analyzes the competitive intensity. This is at any potential opportunities or risk for the business. The five factors that make up the module are threat of new entrants, threat of sub substitutes, bargaining power for suppliers, bargaining power for buyers, competitive rivalry. Burberry's competitive rivalry is moderate. Their main competitors are Armani and Gucci as they are also a higher quality brand. The threat of new entrants is low, as there's innovation of luxury brand, Burberry's quality is unique. Unique. Um, threats of substitutes is moderate. Burberry has a limited unique style that is well known. There's no direct substitute. Bargaining power suppliers is moderate to high. Burberry has few suppliers with exclusive with their exclusive trench coat. Their bargaining power with their customers is low to moderate as they have low customers so they don't need to do market campaigns. But Burberry's competitive rivalry is moderate to high as their rivals are also Gucci, Chanel, Louis Vuitton and Versace. Their threat of entry is low. Prada is a household name as well and um, has extreme loyalty and innovation through their stores. Their threat of substitutes is moderate there is a high threat towards Prada due to the number of counterfeit products on the market. The bargaining power of supplier is low to moderate um, as they are high quality goods which has exclusive external internal supplies.
Both Burberry and Prada have loaned new threats to entry as both companies are household names and in their own right. These companies experience threats of substitutes which are moderate to high, with Burberry only selling the trench coat and part of the bags and their counterfeit. Burberry has a high bargaining power due to exclusivity of the famous trench coat, whilst Prada has low to intermediate bargaining power as there is a high quality of goods. Strategic groups are organisations within an industry that have similar strategic characteristics following similar strategies or competing on similar basis. These characteristics are different from those in other strategic groups in the same industry or sector. Various different characteristics that distinguish between strategic groups. Strategic groups can be mapped on two-dimensional charts. These can be used for useful tools for analysis. Strategic grouping. Having viewed the two luxury brands, Burberry and Prada, we can see from the image above both companies share the same competitors. Burberry and Prada are very close on their grouping. As you can see, Topshop, Zara and H&M, their prices and quality are more towards low compared to the luxury brands which have been placed much higher. Key competitors of both brands are Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Armani, Chanel and many others placed on the map. Resource framework for Burberry and Prada. Resources are assets that an organisation has or can call upon, such as their partners and suppliers. Physical resources. Total number of stores for Burberry is 498. They've recently opened a new trench coat factory in Leeds. The factory in Yorkshire stitched 5,000 of their brand's heritage trench coats a week. Burberry being an English brand, they've kept their manufacturing based in the UK. On the other hand, Prada Group's distribution network extends across 70 countries, counting 622 directly operated stores as of 2016. The group's manufacturing is concentrated in 11 plants, 10 in Italy and one in Great Britain, plus research and development laboratories. Financial resources for Burberry, the cash is a total of 712 million and the creditors is 159 million. On the other hand, for Prada, the cash and cash equipment is a total of 568 million and the creditors is 281 million. Human resource, number of employees for Burberry is 10,851. On the other hand, for Prada, the number of employees are 12,414. Intellectual capital for Prada Group, they operate under several brands such as Car Shoe. On the other hand, for Burberry Group, they just operate under the Burberry brand. The difference between the two is that one is doing better than the other. Burberry focuses on their customers' needs and wants and taking info from what they have gathered from the survey, as they are collecting information and putting it on the database and analysing it. Mackenzie's 7S for Burberry versus Prada, soft element. Burberry style is known for their trench pattern to promote all of their products and ranges, whilst Prada is known for their chic, elegant and cutting edge style. Burberry is skills, they like to train they have training programs for their employees to ensure that they have long lasting um, internal people whilst Prada um, goes to different countries which represents a strong presence worldwide. Uh, pra Burberry um, staff, they employ individuals with, creative, with a creative flair whilst the staff for Prada um, deferring monitors and splits them into teams. Now we'll be looking at shared values. The shared values of Burberry is consideration of environment. They operate in as well as their shareholders, whilst Prada it grows growth is part of long term goal as well as condition. The value chain describes the categories of activities within an organization which creates a product or service. It invites a strategist to think of an organization in terms of sets of activities where sources of competitive advantage can be analyzed in all activities. It also gives a general description of activities so you can understand the differences between them and how they both contribute to consumer benefit and how they add to cost. It identifies activities where the organization organization has particular strengths or weaknesses by analyzing the competitive position of the organization using the variety cr criteria lastly it looks for ways to enhance value or decrease cost in value activities example outsourcing Burberry has two types of valuable resources such as tangible and intangible ass assets which consist of physical assets such as plant labor and finance the intangible assets are information reputation and knowledge they have won many awards for its design and innovation which shows they focus more on the technology and development side of things from the value chain their core competences is the digital innovation because they want to connect customers directly to the brand where customers can customize their own
design. As for Prada, their valuable resources are also raw, materi raw materials, labour and finance. Their production is very comprehensive with the help of sophisticated workmanship, top quality and the level of detail ca characteristic is crafted. Innovation is at the core of Prada's success. They operate in other sectors such as eyewear, fragrance, mobile phone se and mobile phone sectors. Prada's profit and loss account as a revenue report has increased significantly between 2013 and 2014. However, this was not matched the following year and actually fell below the level set at the end of year finishing Jan 2014. However, what can be seen is that this has been improved upon by the company and although not the same level as the year ending January 2014, it has increased in the year ending Jan 2016. This suggests that perhaps there is a reason for the sudden spike from 2013 to 2014 such as a change in trends. But in con in contrast to Pro Prada, Burberry have looked to increase the sales in the wholesale market, which can be seen by the increase in revenue earned between 2012 to 2016 by roughly 30 percent. The interesting part, however, is the decrease in revenue earned from licensing, suggesting that this has become less important to them, or perhaps the shift to wholesale has been as a result of less demand for the licensing of Burberry. This, however, depends on which type of licensing Burberry is profiting from. For example, the fall in licensing could be due to Burberry buying franchise store stores. However, at this point, this is just speculation. On collaborations, which is good for them. They both have diffusion brands, Prada having Miu Miu and Burberry having London Brit and Porsium. Weaknesses, they both suffer from the weaknesses that they have a lot of counterfeits being luxury item. Um, at premium premium price point, it's hard to market to the larger markets. Another weakness for Prada is that because they're a private company, when they got into debt, they had to sell part of the company to get out of that debt. Um, opportunities for both of them is that there's new emerging markets with e-commerce and they can outsource production. An opportunity for Burberry in the short term is that because of the pound getting weaker, they could sell more to the Asian market. Um, was an opportunity for Prada is they can go for a younger market with Miu Miu products. Threats for both of them are the competitors, the counterfeiters and um, um, Brexit in the long term for Burberry. And here is our final reference list and as you can see we've used a wise range of resources such as the core module book, the internet and lecture slides. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions please feel free to ask and thank you.